Muy bien. Gracias por estar aquí. Very good. Thank you for being here. Aquí tenemos la lección número 10, la cual se llama los artículos. Here we have lesson number 10, which is called articles. Before we jump into the lesson, I just wanted to give you a quick preview. If you feel like we've been moving pretty fast, feel free to go back and review any of the course content that I've provided you. Um, the, if you were to go back and retake some of those quizzes, I think that would really help. Um, but probably the, the thing that could be most helpful is if you were to go back and actually um, go through the speaking practices again, because there's nothing like a little bit more repetition uh, vocally. Um, as you speak Spanish, you are training your mouth and the muscles in your mouth to form the proper shapes to sound like an authentic Spanish speaker. These aren't muscles that are used all the time in the right way. And so as an English speaker learning Spanish, you have to train your mouth to form those shapes. And so going back and reviewing those speaking practices can be really, really helpful. In this lesson, I'm going to help you learn a little bit about articles. Now, don't get too caught up in that term because articles are really simple words. In fact, they're some of the most simple words in the entire English language. And in English, we have three basic articles. In Spanish, that expands to eight. And these are words that are really simple and common. You use them in practically everything that you say. These are words like the a, uh, an, and some. Now, in Spanish, we have to add a layer of complexity because there are words that have number and gender. So there are plural articles, there are singular articles, there are female and male articles. So we have to add in that complexity. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach that to you right now. This lesson, if you feel like we've been moving pretty fast with a lot of um, kind of complex terminology and complex concepts, this lesson, in my opinion, you can kind of sit back and enjoy because it's not really meaty, it's just pretty basic. Um, I like to think about articles as salt and pepper because while you use salt and pepper with pretty much everything you eat, you don't always use it. And like likewise with articles, you use them almost all the time, but not quite all the time. So with that said, let's jump into lesson 10 on articles. Here's the learning outline. First, we're going to start with some vocabulary, followed by just a quick overview of what an article is and how they're used. And uh, we're going to contrast English articles with those in Spanish because the list is, uh, the list grows. Like I was saying, we add um, that layer of complexity for Spanish articles. Then we're going to look at number and gender agreement, a little bit of it, because in lesson 11, we actually get into more depth. Um, some translation exercises, which should be nice, followed by a quiz, and then a, a quick look at some of the common pitfalls, and a speaking practice, followed by some comprehension. Let's get started. Vocabulario. Say these with me. Los padres. Los padres the parents. Padres is a fantastic vocabulary word, not just because it's common, but it stretches and it tests your mouth a lot because you got to say pa the res. Okay, so that P or that DR combination can be kind of tricky. Tricky. Remember, it's not padres, padres. That D is soft. Padres. It's almost a TH. Padres, padres, padres. And the R is just your typical Spanish R. Padres, padres, the parents. La chica, la chica. Una chica, una chica. El coche, el carro, el auto. El coche, el carro, el auto. These are all three different ways to say the car. El coche, carro, auto. Las armas, las armas. El bolígrafo, el bolígrafo. Una hoja de papel, una hoja de papel. Una hoja de papel. Unos 
Números. Unos números. Unos números. Notice that written accent over the U. Unas preguntas. Unas preguntas. Unas preguntas. ¿Dónde están los llaves? ¿Dónde están los llaves? Me da un lápiz. Me da un lápiz. Me da un lápiz. Notice as I'm um, giving you these phrases, a lot of times these words really run together. And that's a challenge that English speakers have with Spanish. But you want to notice, like that first one, ¿Dónde están los llaves? You really couldn't tell where ¿Dónde ended and están began. ¿Dónde están los llaves? Okay, you'll get really good at this over time, but I want you to notice when that takes place. La comida está lista. La comida está lista. La comida está lista. Llegan en unos minutos. Llegan en unos minutos. I could also say here, llegan ellos en unos minutos. Articles are basic, basic words. They are words that we're really familiar with. And in English, they are extremely simple. These are like the smallest, most basic, simplest words you've seen. The, a, uh, an, and some. All right. These articles typically are, like I said, they're simple. They typically precede a noun like the house, the car, the animal. All right. A pillow. An athlete. Some food. Some people. Okay. So they, they are words that typically precede a noun and they modify a noun. You don't need to worry about what that means to modify. It just means that articles, they're really not useful unless they are accompanied by a noun. They are really quite often paired with a noun. And that's what that means. So in Spanish, let's look at some version or let's look at uh, a few examples of articles followed by nouns in Spanish. El coche. La chica. Okay. El and la are the articles. They precede the noun. They're simple words. Pretty basic. Los padres, las armas, okay? Los padres, las armas. Un bolígrafo, un bolígrafo, un is the article. Una hoja de papel, una hoja de papel. Unos números, unos números, unos is the article. Unas preguntas, unas preguntas. Unas is the article. So the first rule related to articles is that the article must agree in number and gender with the nouns they modify. Okay, we're going to talk about this in quite a bit of depth in the next lesson. So we, we don't go into a lot of detail here, but just remember this, that when you pair an article with a noun, if the noun is singular and feminine, the article has to be singular and feminine. Okay. Rule two, the articles always precede the noun. So it's always the boy, those or the girl. Okay. Here is the article chart in Spanish. Okay. So you'll notice here that instead of just three or four articles, like we have in English, there are quite a few articles in Spanish and to make things a little more complicated, you have to fit the articles inside this table, or you could call this a matrix. A matrix is simply, um, a, a table that tells you it communicates the characteristic of the article. So for example, in Spanish, there is a, if your noun is singular and masculine. So let's say you're talking about el chico, 
the boy. Okay, so Chico is your noun, and it's singular and masculine. We have an article for a singular masculine noun. It's the article el. So you'll see if you kind of do like with your fingers, you kind of like go up and down the chart here in Spanish. And then with your other finger, kind of go this way across horizontally and meet up at the L. Then you'll notice that L is at the cross section of singular and masculine. Likewise, la is at the cross section of singular and feminine. Los is at the cross section intersection of plural and masculine. Likewise, los is at the intersection of plural and feminine. And then we have un, una, unos, and unas. Okay, so in Spanish, there are eight basic articles here, and I've given you their translations into English. So, el, los, un, and unos are the masculine articles. La, las, una, and unas are the feminine articles. All right, so now we're just kind of getting giving you some exposure to articles in Spanish. I hope this is straightforward. This table should, should be a resource and an aid for you. It should help you grasp this concept that um, articles kind of fit inside these categories, singular, plural, masculine, and feminine. Okay, so we can now translate the following given what your knowledge of articles is to this point. So I'm going to give you a word, la escuela, and we're going to translate that together into English. La is just the word for the, like, like it's showing on this table. So the answer to la escuela is the school. Escuela means school. Los Tacos. All right, this one's easy. Los is uh, plural and masculine. Ta that's because tacos is our noun and it's plural and masculine. So los tacos means the tacos. Un perro. Un perro. Singular masculine article here. Un perro means a dog. Una mañana. Una mañana. Mañana means morning, so a morning, a morning. The shirt, now we're, now we're looking at words in English, translating them to Spanish, and I'll, I'll help you through these, okay? I'm not expecting you to know these. La camisa, la camisa, the shirt. The money, el dinero, el dinero. Okay, the money. A house, una casa, una casa. And some cowboys, unos vaqueros, unos vaqueros. Okay, so there's some vocabulary words for you. Oh, and here are their meanings right here. Awesome. Okay. Here are a few more rules around articles, or maybe not rules, but uses of articles. So rule number three, you use articles with abstract nouns. So if you're trying to tell somebody like you're introducing yourself to somebody and you say, hey, I like science. I like to play basketball. You say, me gusta la ciencia, the science. I like the science. Me gusta la ciencia. Ella juega. El baloncesto. She plays basketball. El baloncesto. Aprendemos el español. We learn Spanish. So it's not aprendemos español. It's aprendemos el español. We learn Spanish. Que viva la España. Okay, you'll hear that a lot. Like, long live Spain. Okay, when you say something like that, you got to use the article in front of it because it's an because Spain is an abstract noun. It's not concrete. It's not like it's an object that I can hold in my hand. Okay. And likewise, science is not really an object I can hold in my hand. 
Um, the Spanish language is not it's not a tangible noun. It's an abstract noun. So you say things like, Que viva la España. Aprendemos el español. Ella juega el baloncesto. Me gusta la ciencia. Me gusta el arte. I like art. Okay, number four is you use articles when you are referencing families. Like if you say, hey, my next door neighbors, the Joneses, you say Los Joneses. Okay, so here are two examples. Ella conoce Los Fernandes. She knows the Fernandez family. Los Fernandes means the Fernandez family. Hablo a la Señora Larson. I speak to Mrs. Larson. Okay, notice, la señora. Hablo a la señora Larson. I speak to Mrs. Larson. And a couple more uses. You use L when the noun begins with a stressed A or HA. Okay, so when the first noun or the first um, letter of the noun is a, a stressed A, that means the emphasis is on that first A, like the word agua. Notice. Agua has the, the, the emphasis on that first A. It's L when it's singular, but las when it's plural. Okay, so el agua, but las aguas. Okay, and we'll look more at this in the next lesson too. So just know that this is out there. One of the rules is to, when, when the noun has a stressed A sound on the first syllable, so that first A, when it's stressed or when the emphasis is on that first A, it's masculine, el agua, but las aguas, feminine when plural. Rule number six, you can combine a and el and de and el. These are like, in English, I think we call these conjunctions. Um, so you can combine these two. And sometimes you'll see this in Spanish writing. I bet you've seen it and you've said like, oh, what does that mean exactly? So this is what it means. Um, you combine a and l and de and l. Me gusta ir al cine. I want, I like to go to the theater. Okay, al cine is a plus l. A el cine, al cine. Recibes un regalo del maestro. You receive a gift from the teacher. From the would normally be de el. Okay, that's, that's the Spanish direct translation. But you combine these. When it's de and el, you combine them to del. All right, this goes back to what I was saying about kind of squishing words together and running words together so you can't really tell where one ends and the next one begins. This is a similar principle. Recibes un regalo del maestro. Instead of de el maestro, it's just del maestro. Siempre juego al tenis. I'm always playing tennis. Siempre juego al tenis. Okay. I'm always playing tennis. Wow, some more uses. So with uh, the seasons calendar seasons. La primavera es muy cómodo en Chile. Spring is very comfortable in Chile. La primavera es muy cómodo en Chile. Los veranos pasados hicieron malas temperaturas. Los veranos pasados hicieron, hicieron malas temperaturas. The past summers were terribly hot. And then rule number eight, when you reference groups. Okay, this one's pretty basic. Nosotros los estudiantes somos inteligentes. We, the students, are intelligent. Ustedes, las consejeras, tienen mucho que hacer. You counselors have a lot to do. Ustedes, las consejeras, Tienen mucho que hacer. You counselors have a lot to do. All right, so you'll hear, you'll, you might hear people, like if you were in Mexico, you might hear somebody say, nosotros los mexicanos. Okay, so they'll say something like, us, the Mexicans. Nosotros los mexicanos. 
Okay, so just a few pitfalls to be aware of, and these are basic. Of course, you don't want to use masculine articles with feminine nouns and vice versa. So you don't want to get that mixed up. This is a pretty basic one to avoid, except maybe the first week you're speaking Spanish, it might be something you have to pay attention to. But after that first week, if you're speaking Spanish fairly often, you'll get through this one really quickly. Um, and then the next one is just using singular articles with plural nouns and vice versa. So like a singular article, la with escuelas, okay? This kind of stuff is basic, but these are the pitfalls you have to watch out for. So just keep these in mind. And again, like I've said a lot, um, the more you can speak Spanish, the more you can practice, the, the, uh, the, the better you'll be at avoiding these pitfalls. But not only that, the better you'll just be at speaking Spanish. So get out there and be vulnerable and speak a lot of Spanish if you can. So let's do a quick practice through some scenarios, okay? So you know how this goes. I'm gonna ask you a question, you'll get, get some, have some time to respond out loud, and then I will give the correct response. And of course, the subject and verb placement. So let's keep that in mind. And now let's move on. Okay. Cantar. Cantas tú una canción con el coro? ¿Cantas tú una canción con el coro? Do you sing a song with the choir? Sí, yo canto una canción con el coro. Sí, yo canto una canción con el coro. Yes, I do sing a song with the choir. Come el el bocadillo en un café? Come el el bocadillo en un café? Okay, now I threw in a little tricky thing here. I put the word el twice, like right next to um, itself. Now, I want I wanted to test you because this is a correct sentence. Um, and actually these two words are different. El, with, an, with a written accent, actually means he. It's the subject of this sentence. And el bocadillo, el in purple, is the article. Okay, so the articles in these questions are going to be in purple. El, with a written accent, again, is just the subject. Does he eat the sandwich in the coffee shop? Si, sí, el come el bocadillo en un café. Si, sí, él come el bocadillo en un café. Yes, he eats the sandwich in the coffee shop. ¿Limpian ellos el piso de cocina? ¿Limpian ellos el piso de cocina? Do they clean the kitchen floor? ¿Limpian ellos el piso de cocina? Sí, ellos limpian el piso de cocina. Sí, ellos limpian el piso de cocina. Yes, they clean the kitchen floor. Escribimos nosotros en un cuaderno. Escribimos nosotros en un cuaderno. Do we write in a notebook? Sí, nosotros escribimos en un cuaderno. Sí, nosotros escribimos en un cuaderno. Yes, we write in a notebook. ¿Habla usted con una señora enojada? ¿Habla usted con una señora enojada? Do you speak with an angry woman?
Si yo hablo con una señora enojada. Si yo hablo con una señora enojada. Yes, I speak with an angry woman. ¿Se escriben ellos unas cartas de amor? ¿Se escriben ellos unas cartas de amor? Now, don't worry too much about the se escriben part. We will get into that in a later lesson, but uh, we're not going to go into the details now. It is helpful to have some exposure to it so that you can learn a little bit about it, um, but I'm not going to give you the details around se just yet. Do they write each other some love letters? Do they write each other some love letters? Si ellos se escriben unas cartas de amor. Si ellos se escriben unas cartas de amor. Yes, they write each other some love letters. Llama ella el número equivocado. Llama ella el número equivocado. Does she call the wrong number? I hope you realize that like I'm giving you some really good vocabulary words like numero equivocado, the wrong number. That's that's a really good vocabulary word. You may not use it every day, but you will use it and it's fairly common and you're going to hear it. So it's a it's a great one. Just like cartas de amor, love letters, um uh piso de cocina, the kitchen floor, like those are really good vocabulary words to remember. Si, ella llama el número equivocado. Si, ella llama el número equivocado. Yes, she calls the wrong number. Here's the comprehension exercise. Let's go through the piece on the left together and I will um, translate that to the piece on the right. En la cocina tenemos unos postres. In the kitchen, en la cocina, in the kitchen, tenemos, we have, unos postres, some pastries, que compramos, that we purchased. So compramos means we purchased para los vecinos, for the neighbors. Te los vamos a llevar. All right, so this gets a little bit complicated. But te los vamos a llevar means we'll take them over to... Okay, basically it means te los vamos a llevar. Vamos is we're going. Llevar is to take. And te los just means um, to take them to you. Okay, so we'll get into this type of thing later, but... It does help to have some exposure to it before you're actually um, asked or required to know it. Okay, so te los vamos a llevar means we're going to take them to you. A tu casa, to your house. Dentro means inside. Okay, so inside. Dentro de una hora. Inside of an hour, we'll take these over to you. Okay, te los vamos a llevar a tu casa dentro de una hora. We'll take them over to your house in an hour or less.